Good afternoon, honored guests, University of Manitoba, Provost Leadership Team, faculty and school representatives, uh, University of Manitoba Students Union, co colleagues, friends, and family. We're really pleased to have all of you join us for the 31st Students Teacher Recognition Reception. My name is Erica Jung. I'm the director at the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning, and I will be your MC for today's event. I would like to begin by acknowledging that the University of Manitoba is located on a, the original lands of Anishinaabe, Cree, Oje Cree, Dakota, and Dene peoples, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. We respect the treaties made on these territories. We acknowledge the harms and mistakes of the past, and we dedicate ourselves to moving forward in partnership with Indigenous communities in a spirit of reconciliation and collaboration. So I would like to start by introducing some of the members of our, not some, our members of our platform. We have with us today Dr. Diane Hebert Murphy, Provost and Vice President Academic, who will bring greetings on behalf of the University of Manitoba. We also have Dr. Mark Torsha, Vice Provost Teaching and Learning, who will be presenting the awards and the certificates. This is a signature event for the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning. Uh, we host this every year, and every year we're honored to highlight the importance of teaching and teachers on students' educational journeys. Today, we have 22 students, uh, graduating students, representing every faculty and school across the university, uh, and they have selected two educators who have had an impact on their learning, one from their K to 12 years and one from their time here at the U of M. So I would like to now call on Dr. Diane Hebert Murphy to bring words of welcome. Great. Thanks very much, Erica. Well, good afternoon. I too want to welcome all of you for, and thank you for being here. Um, we have quite the crew. We have our honored guests, our teachers, we have our students who have also uh, gone through a selection process to be here. Uh, we have many members of our university community, uh, deans, associate deans, uh, other colleagues, and, and probably most importantly, we have many friends, family, and colleagues of the folks that we're going to honor today. So again, welcome and thank you very much for being here. As Erica said, this is the 31st Students Teacher Recognition event. It's quite a, quite a mouthful. Um, it's an event that we, in which we honor very special teachers who've had an impact on the lives of some of our most accomplished students. And I know that you're not really supposed to have favorites, but this is one of my very favorite university events. Teaching is an amazing profession, albeit a very demanding one. Teachers at all levels require a very wide range of skills and abilities in order to do their jobs well. And there are some who truly go above and beyond to provide the very best educational experience they can for their students. We are going to hear about some very special teachers who have provided guidance, inspiration, and some direction at crucial times in a student's life. The teachers that we're going to honor today have spent years, many of them, honing their, their skills, honing their craft, honing their profession in order to do what they do effectively. They have found innovative ways to engage students and to get them excited about learning. I suspect that as you sit uh, in your chairs this afternoon, you too are going to reflect back on your own uh, life as a student. I hope most of those reflections are positive, and I hope that you're able to think about the teachers that made a significant impact on you in your educational journey. I know that as I uh, sit and hear about teachers that have been impacting the students we're, we're recognizing today, I think about the high school teacher who really challenged me to recognize what he saw as the potential in me. And I think about the university professors, a couple of them, who had a very crucial role in some of the decisions that I made about my educational journey. 
And they may never know it, but they had a profound impact on my life's trajectory, and I am so very grateful for them. We are going to hear about some very special connections between teachers and students. I think you're going to be inspired as you listen to each student share the stories that they have about the impact that these teachers have had on their education and probably more importantly, their lives. On behalf of the president and the entire executive team here at the university, I want to extend my warmest congratulations, first of all, to the students who are being recognized and who've been, um, who've been selected to participate today, and most importantly, to the teachers that we're honoring for your hard work and your dedication. I very much, as well as I'm sure you will, uh, look forward to hearing these special stories. Thank you very much and enjoy the event. Thank you, Dr. Hubert Murphy, for the welcome and just reminding us of the importance of our educational experiences. We all have them and we all uh, have memories that will last with us and that we'll take with us on our, on our journeys through life. So today, uh, we are going to have that opportunity to hear about the journey of the students that have been selected. And uh, we're going to call up by faculty each nominated student with their honored teachers. So what we'll do is we'll have you come up to my right, and then the student will share at the mic, and you'll have your teachers, if they're both here, uh, on either side of you. And then you will head over to my left, receive your certificate and awards, and then head down the stage to the back corner where there will be photographs taken. So at that time, I'd ask that the faculty representatives, senior sticks, if you could head over when your faculty, your student from your faculty uh, is coming off the stage, then we'll have group photos uh, all together at that time, and then you can head back to your seats, and we'll be calling up the next faculty, the, the next student and teachers. So at this time, I will ask Dr. Hubert Murphy to head to the photo area, and. Uh, and as well, just for your information, once you do receive your uh, glass awards, there are blue boxes at the back just up by the photo station, so you can grab one to put your glass award in safely so that nothing happens to it for the remainder of the event. We have, I've been here a while. We had one time where the teacher unfortunately dropped it before they returned to their seat. I know, that would be sad, so we don't want that to happen. So we put the box, boxes near the photo booth uh, now. You learn from these things. <laughs> okay, so I'd like to call up uh, to start. Uh, oh, okay, so uh, from the Faculty of Agricultural and Food Sciences, LaDon Dirksen and teachers Dr. Snehil Dua and Mr. Ed Hildebrand. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is LaDawn Dirksen, and I have just completed a second degree in human nutritional sciences with a focus in dietetics. I want to start by thanking the University of Manitoba for hosting this event and allowing us as students to honor those teachers and professors who have helped us along in our education journey. Secondly, I want to thank the Faculty of Agriculture and Food Sciences for nominating me for this award. Deciding to return to the university in my 40s was a scary, albeit exciting decision, and I was not sure how I would make the transition back, but the faculty and staff were tremendous and helped me along in my journey and helped me make this smooth transition. So thank you for nominating me for this award. I graduated from high school more than 20 years ago, and so I did have to haul out my yearbook to re <laughs> remind myself who all my teachers were, but there is actually no hesitation who I would honor here today. I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Ed Hildebrandt. He was band and choir teacher at the Steinbeck Regional Secondary School for more than 20 years. Um, Ed created a space in our day that we looked forward to and a place where longtime friendships were forged. As a mother of teenagers myself now, I understand the wild complexities of teenagers and how difficult or tricky it can be to capture their hearts and still motivate them to do what you want them to do. And Ed had that ability. He inspired us to excellence, uh, but did it in a way that made us feel motivated and empowered to do so. So thank you, Ed, for all you've done for students over the years. 
Nominating a professor was a bit more of a difficult decision simply because it's been so fresh. Um, but the Department of Human Nutritional Sciences is full of amazing professors, all of whom should be up here receiving award. But in polling my fellow students, it was Dr. Sunil Dua that stood out to us this year. Um, Dr. Dua is a brilliant food researcher with many um, amazing abilities, but she never wants recognition for those abilities. Her goal is simply to be there for her students and challenge them to learn and be educated um, in real world practical uh, life learning lessons, not just theory, including using work integrated learning projects in her classroom. She uses humor, personal side stories, and creative evaluation strategies to engage her students. She creates a safe space where every student is respected, no question is a dumb question, and tangents were frequent when we needed further explanation on more difficult concepts. So thank you, Dr. Dua, for caring so much for your students, and it's an honor to recognize you today. Next, the, from the School of Agriculture, student James Bashford and teachers Mr. Garrett Sawatsky and Mr. Gregory Clark. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, honored to be here at the University of Manitoba's student recognition reception. I'd like to begin by thanking the selections committee and the School of Agriculture for selecting me and for giving me the opportunity to thank and recognize two teachers who have made a significant impact on my academic journey and my passion for learning. The first teacher is Mr. Greg Clark, my math teacher throughout high school. Mr. Clark is not only a brilliant teacher, but also a kind, helpful, and easygoing person. He always encouraged me to challenge myself and made each class an enjoyable experience. He taught me how to think critically, logically, and out of the box. I did not pretend to remember much of what he actually taught me about math specifically. <laughs> However, what I do remember is that he has been the only teacher I have ever met who has been able to make math truly enjoyable to learn and also to teach it in a way that makes even more, even complex algebra or calculus seem like simple addition. The second teacher is Mr. Garrett Swatsky, my farm management instructor in both my first and second years in diploma. Mr. Swatsky is not only an instructor in the agriculture diploma program, but also a farmer himself, augmenting his teaching with lots of personal experience and knowledge from his own farm. He is an enthusiastic, engaging, and dedicated teacher who made his lectures engaging and relevant using examples from his own farm and from current issues in, agricult in the agriculture. He has helped to teach me how to manage a farm efficiently, sustainably, and profitably. I also think it is important to note the extra work that all teachers have faced over the past few years with COVID and COVID restrictions making teaching difficult, and I would like to thank you all here today for persevering through it. Both these teachers here beside me have gone through this period with flying colors and shown their true dedication to education, despite the frequent lack of enthusiasm from students to turn their cameras on during <laughs> online classes. These two teachers have helped shape me into the person I am today. They have maintained in me an enthusiasm for learning and a passion for agriculture. They have prepared me for the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead, and I am grateful for their guidance and influence. I hope they know how much respect they have from both myself and all their students. Thank you, Mr. Clark, and thank you, Mr. Swatsky, for being the very best at what you do. Thank you. <laughs> Next, we have the, from the Faculty of Architecture, student Shahid Harishi, and teachers Professor Jason Chan and Mr. Kevin Selinsky. Hello everyone, my name is Shad Harisha and I would like to begin by thanking the Faculty of Architecture for selecting me to be, for me to be here today, honoring these two wonderful teachers, Mr. Kevin Solinsky and Jay Sung Chung. During my high school years at Balmoral Hall in Winnipeg, Mr. Solinsky was my pre-calculus teacher. And if there's one thing I remember about Mr. Solinsky, it was that his door was always open for his students. Whether we needed help with math or just wanted to chat about life, he was always there to lend an ear. And let's be honest, we all needed someone to talk to during those very confusing high school years. 
Mr. Selinski was always very attentive to our well-being and helped us focus on the bigger picture in life, even if it was in a tough love type of way sometimes. He always pushed us to do our best while always reassuring us that one bad math test wasn't going to ruin our whole future. He was patient, kind, and always available to help whenever I needed it. He helped me excel and fall in love with a subject I didn't think I could ever fall in love with. But most importantly, I will never forget Mr. Selinsky's sense of humor and sarcasm. I don't remember a single class where I didn't die of laughter, even during the most stressful times near exam season, and it's pretty hard to make a stressed person laugh. But most, <laughs> he had a unique way of making us look forward to his lessons and his spot-on student imitations, especially when he would imitate my hot moments when I didn't understand something, never failed to make the class laugh. I never thought my confusion could be so funny, but he made it work while always making sure I understood the concepts. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not the only person who feels this way. I can speak on behalf of many students and classmates. Mr. Selinski, you are more than just a teacher. You are a mentor, a role model, and a very funny friend. Congratulations on this well-deserved recognition. Jay was my first duty instructor in my second year of the environmental design program. And if there's one thing Jay has taught me, it's how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. The second year of the environmental design degree is tough. And I often struggled with confidence in my designs, which is not uncommon when you're in a field where there are no right answers. But Jay never gave up on me. He helped me expand my creativity in ways I never thought was even possible and believed in me and my designs, even when I didn't believe in them myself. Jay's passion for design is contagious, and his enthusiasm for the subject gave me hope and inspired me to keep, go to keep going. But what I appreciated most about Jay was that he never prioritized grades or anything else above genuine learning and our growth as students and as designers. So I want to thank Jay, as without his guidance, support, and patience, I wouldn't be where I am today. He always went above and beyond, always answering my frantic last minute Discord messages days before project reviews to get his opinion on last minute details of my projects that people would have no wouldn't have noticed anyway. Thank you and congratulations on this well-deserved recognition, Jay. So as we celebrate our teachers here today, I wanted to end with a quote that has always resonated with me. I've learned that people often forget what you said, people will often forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. So to both of my teachers, I will never forget the confidence and inspiration that you made me feel as a student. Thank you. Next, we have from the School of Art, student Zoe Lebrun and teachers, Professor Sarah Churzek and Ms. Shinoa Walker. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thank you all for being here today. My name is Zoe Lebrun, and I'll be graduating with my Bachelor of Fine Arts. Um, I just finished my honors year, and I'm so honored to have been nominated to speak to you today and honor Sarah Sarasic and Shinoa Walker with these Teaching Recognition Awards. Uh, frankly, I'm not used to the idea that I'll be graduating, um, but I'm still grateful to be here, and I couldn't have done it without the support of these and many other amazing educators. Um, so Sarah was one of my honors year professors, and although I've only known her for a short while, Sorry, I might cry, guys. <laughs> um, getting to know and learn from her has been a highlight. <laughs> Someone else want to read this? <laughs> um, it's been a highlight of my time. The final year of any degree is especially stressful. Man, I really don't know. <laughs> But her energy and genuine feedback made Sarah the perfect prof to have. Um, over the last year, she's made time to meet for extra studio visits, um, provide feedback on external applications, and um, check in with people going through tough times. Her support and encouragement has been invaluable to me as grad approaches, and I learned what it means to be an artist in the real world. Sarah, thank you for being a positive voice. <laughs> and um, 
demonstrating how necessary it is to blend critical thinking with optimism to find your way through the world and become successful. When I've doubted myself, you remind us to treat myself with kindness and look towards the future with openness and enthusiasm. Have helped me subdue my anxieties and imposter syndrome, which I appreciate so much, especially this past year. As for Ms. Walker, um, she was my high school art teacher at Springfield Collegiate Institute. She was open-minded, patient, and fun, and her classroom was a very safe space for me during my time as a teenager. Um, but my favorite part of her class was the sketchbook assignment, which Ms. Walker would leave comments in during the grading process. This is an important detail. Um, after high school, I took a year off of making art, and um, although I did well in my other general university classes, I felt unfulfilled and wasn't sure why. Um, then one day I was looking through my old sketchbooks and came across a drawing that I actually had made on the UM campus of uh, one of the buildings. And uh, she left a note on it that said, Zoe, I hope you will be doing this same thing at the U of M in three years. And I became emotional <laughs> um, because I realized that this was what I wanted too. I had just been too scared to realize it. This note significantly impacted my decision to apply to the School of Art and shortly after this realization, I contacted Ms. Walker, who assisted me in my application from start to finish. I don't think I could have done it without your help. <laughs> so thank you for helping me find my way to a place that has enriched my life in so many ways, allowing me to meet amazing profs like Sarah, find lifelong friends, and grow more as an artist than I ever thought I could. Very grateful. Um, and yeah, thank you both again for everything you've done and will continue to do for your students and broader communities. You're both stellar examples of what it means to build connection through art, and it's been a privilege to learn from you both. Thank you all for listening. We're prepared. As I mentioned, I've been here a while. <laughs> uh, okay, so next we have from the Faculty of Arts, student Lydia Gork and teachers, Dr. Marissa Dayborn and Ms. Michelle Davidson. Hello everyone. Thank you for coming to honor so many amazing educators today. The teachers I am recognizing are two women who have made meaningful impacts in my learning and have, who have been role models for me throughout my educational journey. Ever since beginning the International Baccalaureate Program at Kelvin High School, I aspired to go to university, and entering Ms. Davidson's physics class in grade 11 gave me a mentor towards that goal. Though her classroom was in the basement, the energy Ms. Davidson brought to class always lit up the room and made students excited to learn. She shared with students her background as an engineer and career possibilities related to physics, helping students, especially young women, anticipate working in the field. Ms. Davidson went above and beyond supporting me in applying for engineering in the NGAT program at the University of Manitoba, as well as navigating the transition between high school and university. I academically excelled in my first engineering courses at UM thanks to Ms. Davidson's great instruction over the years. And though I am now completing a Bachelor of Arts in Indigenous Studies and beginning a Master's of Arts in the fall, it was having a woman role model like Ms. Davidson who is passionate about her area of teaching, her work, and students that helped me establish myself at the university and envision a future in post-secondary that I am equally as dedicated to. I was left in good hands at the university here. Meeting Dr. DeBorn in my third year in her Indigenous Theory course was pivotal to my academic trajectory, helping me realize my love for research in Indigenous studies. During that course, Dr. DeBorn encouraged me to apply for the Undergraduate Research Award for the summer of 2022 and held a direct and reading course for me to do alongside my research project. In addition to Dr. DeBorn's classes that strengthened my appreciation for the work being done in Indigenous studies and my vision for my part in it, Dr. DeBorn also volunteered her time consulting students about graduate school and applying for funding. Dr. DeBorn wrote letters of support for my successful graduate studies and SHRC applications for this fall while also guiding me through the process. 
What made her mentorship all the more meaningful was that it was coming from a woman I look up to. As a young lady full of dreams and ambitions, although sometimes changing, to see the woman in the very roles I aspired to be in and to hear those women encourage me and believe in me instilled a confidence that has been essential for my success throughout post-secondary. Women like Ms. Davidson and Dr. DeBorn provide the blueprints for visions of young women like me. On behalf of all the students you have been a mentor to, I thank you both. <laughs> Also from the Faculty of Arts, student Zlata Oderbets and teachers Dr. David Watt and Mrs. Valerie Zvahinseva. Hi everyone. Before I begin, I would like to thank both the Department of Linguistics and the Department of English Theater, Film, and Media for nominating me, and for the Selection Committee for choosing me for this award. It's an incredible honor to be able to stand here today and tell you about the two educators who have made a tremendous impact on my life and my worldview. I also want to thank my guests for being here, my wonderful mom who came all the way from Ukraine to support me, Lisa, the director of student recruitment who played an important role in me choosing the U of M, and my friends whose support definitely helped me to get through this degree. I have always had an interest in languages, even before I chose to be a linguist. And Valerie, my former French teacher at European Collegium in Kyiv, is someone who was able to further ignite this passion. I was only officially her student for a year, but despite my brief time in her classroom, Valerie's influence on me was so huge that it left no doubt that she was the K-12 teacher I wanted to honor today. I remember always looking forward to her classes as they made the experience of studying French fun and enjoyable, and at times challenging as she was not afraid to push us out of her comfort zone and try new approaches in her teaching. She not only made me appreciate the French language, but allowed us to get immersed in French culture through out-of-class activities, taking her class to various events organized by the French Institute in Kyiv at the time. Within the fairly traditional Ukrainian educational system, which often meant strict boundaries between teacher and student, Valerie's openly friendly demeanor and her genuine respect for her students was a breath of fresh air for my 12-year-old self. She believed in me and supported me when I represented my school at various Olympiads at the district, regional, and sometimes national levels, saying that would always come out on top, which is something I fondly remember to this day. She was a huge inspiration on me on the personal level as well, given how incredibly intelligent and well-traveled she was, while still being very down-to-earth and open to her students' perspectives. After the wonderful year I spent as her student, I was dismayed to hear that she would be leaving Ukraine and permanently moving to Canada. <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised that she was still willing to keep in touch with me and even help me study for my B1 French exam, which thanks to her, I was able to pass with flying colors. I loved hearing about her new life in Canada, which at the time was a country I'd never been to and in how she, in order to become a better educator, went back to school and got a master's degree at U Ottawa. Her ability to drastically change her life and be able to embrace change played an important role in me being brave enough to move across the Atlantic by myself at 16 in order to start my undergraduate here, degree here at the U of M. This brings me to my first year of university where I had the honor of taking my introductory English class with Dr. David Watt, who is absolutely brilliant and who I truly consider to be one of the wisest people I have ever met. It's in this class that I got to experience what I like to call first year English magic. That is, during class discussions, Dr. Watt was able to turn every single little and seemingly insignificant comment made by a student, myself included, into a fully developed, sophisticated idea. In fact, he never dismissed any of our interpretations that we offered as incorrect, but on the contrary, encouraged us to think outside of the box and engage with the text that we were reading creatively. Reading and writing about the tale of Sir Gareth, which is part of Mallory's Mort Arthur in my first year is what sparked my initial interest in medieval literature. 
and uh, it soon became the primary focus of the English side of my degree. And it also meant that I got to take a lot more classes with Dr. Watt, 24 credit hours to be exact. <laughs> His courses made me fall further in love with medieval literature as I familiarized myself with various medieval authors, got to learn more about the period, grew more comfortable with reading Middle English, which sometimes allowed me to apply my linguistic skills and even learn how to work with manuscripts, making connections between the layout of the text on the page and its meaning. Dr. Watt always believed in me and my writing, offering incredibly detailed feedback on my assignments that allowed me to improve my writing skills and sometimes even encouraged me to submit some of my work for department awards. His support often inspired me to go above and beyond the essay requirements and this often resulted in some of my best work that I've produced coming out of his classes. In addition to his important role in my development as a writer, Dr. Watt has always been a kind and friendly presence in my undergrad years, always happy to answer any questions I had about any aspect of university life, give advice, offer help and support. Even as I'm going to do my master's degree in linguistics, I'm going to be bringing with me my improved writing skills as well as my love for medieval literature and appreciation for Middle English, with all of which I owe to Dr. Watt. So I wanna thank you both. <laughs> From the IH Asper School of Business, we have student Jillian Desjardins and teachers Dr. Noha Gattis and Mrs. Melanie Bailey. Hello everyone, my name is Jillian Desjardins and I'm a graduate from the Bachelor of Commerce program with the Asper School of Business, double majoring in accounting and marketing. I'm extremely fortunate to have had many amazing mentors, teachers and advisors throughout this academic journey. And today I'm thankful to have this opportunity to share this recognition to two people, two people who are crucial within it. Mrs. Bailey is a teacher from Faith Academy High School and taught me throughout grade 11 and 12. She taught me in pre-cal, Intro to Calculus and Biology. Upon first meeting Miss Bailey, I noticed that she had radiated positivity, joy, and large amounts of sarcasm. <laughs> Fortunately, we had a shared connection through both our humor and enjoyment of curling, even though I'm not good at it. But beyond that, Mrs. Bailey was a teacher that would be able to joke around with students, no one to be serious, and was extremely knowledgeable and passionate within the material that she taught. She always focused on helping her students and frequently took time out of her busy schedule to ensure that everyone understood what was happening, maybe reviewing tough questions through breaks between classes or setting up study sessions outside school hours. Mrs. Bailey was definitely a mentor that wished for all her students to succeed. And although she is, amazing, she is an amazing teacher, her biggest impact upon me was her kindness. Very often in a traditional setting, it's easy to position topics as purely black or white or right or wrong. But with Ms. Bailey, she chose kindness, forgiveness, empathy, and through this, maybe not intentionally, led by example. She was someone who'd help students when they felt like they didn't have a chance and stood up for what she believed in within situations where she stood alone. <laughs> and for that, I'm extremely grateful to have a mentor like Ms. Bailey during such pivotal moments of my life. <laughs> One moment. <laughs> I have only had the opportunity to meet Ms. Noah Gadas through online classes, but I'm glad that I had when I did. The initial stages of the pandemic were full of stress, ambiguity, and animosity for me and many of my peers. And although most professors tried their best to navigate teaching within this space, there was a definite disconnect between students and professors. Through this, Noah Gadas seemed to be a breath of fresh air. Even though we attended classes through screens, she made them a place where students felt comfortable to participate. As many professors may understand, this is an extremely difficult task, as it's easy for us to turn off the cameras and turn our attention at elsewhere. 
I attended two of NOAA's intermediate accounting classes in consecutive semesters. And though both were challenging, the patience and attitude that she had in teaching through these condi conditions were crucial to my understanding of the material. Unlike many other courses, I felt comfortable in reaching out to her after classes, asking questions during lectures, and look forward to attending them within my week of monotone, faceless Zoom calls. And for that, Noah is a professor that I'm grateful to have had during my time at U of M. Thank you. From the Faculty of Education, we have student Jennifer Ray and teachers Rachel Fesick Lamb and Madame Christine Pierce. Hello, my name is Jennifer Ray Rouse, and I am honored to have been chosen as this year's outstanding student from the Faculty of Education. Both of the teachers here with me today have had a great impact on me as a student and have helped to inspire and shape my career as an educator. Christine Pierce, or Madame as we call her, was my high school French teacher at J.H. Bruns Collegiate. I was fortunate to have Madame as my teacher throughout all four years of high school to work alongside her for three years on student council and to participate in numerous great events with her as our grade coach. Madame's dedication to her students was unmatched and I often think about the impact that she had on me as both a person and as an educator. During my schooling with the Faculty of Education, we were often asked to reflect on the teachers that had an impact on us and helped to inspire the kind of teacher that we wanted to be. I always thought of Madame and how her warm and welcoming spirit impacted me as a shy and anxious grade nine student. The safe, supportive, and fun space that Madame curated within her classroom allowed me to grow and thrive as both a student and as a person. An outstanding teacher not only teaches content and guides lessons, but inspires students to be their best and encourages students to step out of their comfort zone and that is exactly what Madame did for me. Rachel Fesick Lamb was my instructor for multiple courses during my time at the Faculty of Education. It is only fitting that both Madame Piers and Rachel are standing beside me today because when I fir first met Rachel, she immediately reminded me of Madame with the kind, welcoming, and caring attitude that she showed to all of her students. Despite courses being online, Rachel was able to connect with us as students and to share, to show care and compassion through a computer screen. If that wasn't difficult enough, she supported us as students during many uncertain times in the year and helped to provide a space where we were met with understanding, empathy, and felt like we had a voice. While there are many memorable lessons during my time in Rachel's classes that I believe were influential in the decisions that I make today as a teacher, I will never forget her discussions about the importance of relationships. Rachel's commitment to prioritizing relationships were evident in her teaching as every single day she greeted every single student by name as they entered the Zoom conference. She also went out of her way to connect with us and to get to know every single student before the class even started. Rachel taught me a lot about teaching, but above all, she was a living example of what a good teacher should be and how a teacher can show their students that they are cared for. When I first decided to become a teacher, it was because I wanted to teach science. After completing my practicums, I have realized the best part of being a teacher is not about the content, but the connections that you form with your students and seeing your students grow as people. Madame and Rachel, you have both played a key role in my own growth. I know that I will carry the lessons that you have taught me throughout my life and my career, and I aspire to form the kind of relationships with my students as you have with yours. Thank you. <laughs> From the fact from the Price Faculty of Engineering, we have student Ryan Shasky and teachers Ian Jeffrey and Mr. Noah jo Joseph. Taller. 
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan, and I am graduating from the Faculty of Engineering uh, with a degree in Computer Engineering. Uh, so I wanted to think about all the teachers I had over the years. The two that stuck out uh, were Mr. Joseph, who taught me uh, high school chemistry in grade 11 and grade 12 IP physics, and Ian Jeffrey, uh, who gave me a summer job pretty last minute during COVID, uh, which is pretty nice, even though I played video games a lot that summer. Uh, yeah. Uh, as well as taught, uh, taught me parallel processing as a technical elective and was my capstone advisor for our final year engineering project. Uh, when I sat down to think about these two uh, teachers and the effect they had on me, I realized they shared a lot, uh, a lot in common and shared a lot of great qualities I didn't realize. Their technical abilities to break down and teach complex topics, as well as their candor, no bullshit, no red tape attitude towards education and teaching, as well as the actual passion for the content that they taught. Uh, I really appreciate, I appreciate that. I hate political education things. <laughs> uh, uh, so Mr. Joseph, who I still struggle to call Noah, I prefer his Instagram username, nojo13, uh, <laughs> has, maybe get some followers out of that. Uh, <laughs> uh, You're gonna get me in trouble. <laughs> has a passion for teaching and who would help out anyone who, who is willing to put the effort in. This often led to us sticking around during lunchtime and in between classes to talk about, uh, go over practice problems, talk about uh, concepts and topics, as well as any general science, sports, whatever kind of conversation, sci-fi, pop, pop, uh, pop culture stuff. Uh, it was clear that Mr. Joseph himself also had a passion for learning. He himself didn't even uh, study uh, physics, a topic uh, that he specialized in, and has now got back to school uh, to study here at the U of M for his master's degree in physics while teaching part-time. Something that I'm pretty proud that he has done and made the life decision to do so, because I know that's probably a pretty, uh, pretty tough call to do when you have a steady paycheck coming in. Um, in his classroom, there's a lot of trust and independence that he gave. It felt much more like a university classroom uh, than a high school one. And as you're, as you're growing uh, into those later years of high school, uh, it, was, it was a breath of fresh air. Looking back at this, it allowed me to grow up a lot uh, both academically and as a person, and I'm very thankful for that opportunity he gave. Uh, Ian Jeffrey, as I, I've quoted this many times, is the best professor in the electrical and computer engineering uh, department, uh, full stop, hands down, and I'll tell anyone this uh, who walks by. Have you taken parallel with Ian as your tech elective? Doesn't matter if you don't think that's interesting, you'll enjoy it and you'll learn something. Uh, he is intentionally clear and understandable with great demonstrations and examples in his learning. Uh, he's also some of the best PDF notes I've ever seen, and they themselves could be comp uh, compiled and just be a textbook on their own. Um, if you ever have any problems understanding or if you have any questions, he will make sure you understand the concept uh, no matter how long it takes you. Um, yeah, do I need it? <laughs> um, Ian is an example of an outstanding university professor with vast technical knowledge and a passion for research and teaching. I really hope the University of Manitoba is paying him a lot just to keep him here in Manitoba. Uh, thank you, that's all I have to say. <laughs> Give him a raise. From the Clayton H. Riddell Faculty of Environment, Earth and Resources, we have student Andrea Sutherland and teachers Dr. Stefan McLaughlin and Mr. Jarrett Rempel. Hi, I'm Andrea Sutherland, and I'm graduating with an honors degree in environmental science. I'd like to thank my faculty and the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning for the opportunity to be here today. I've chosen to recognize Mr. Jarrett Rempel, my high school physics teacher, and Dr. Steph McLaughlin, my professor and research supervisor, two educators whose attitudes and perspectives have shaped my approach to academics in incredibly positive ways. Now, there's a lot that I could say about Mr. Rempel, so I'll just start by acknowledging that it takes a certain type of person to go on a remote canoe trip. It takes another type entirely to lead one, supervising 20-some high school students in rental canoes, and then do that year after year after year. Not only is Mr. Rempel willing to do that, but he does it with a level of enthusiasm that I will never fully understand even if it did help foster my appreciation for the natural world. 
Mr. Rumpel also taught me to test my limits as my classmates and I challenged ourselves to solve his upper level physics questions. His physics class was filled with the best kinds of challenges, like building a marble ramp to calculate the launch velocity of the marble and a sled to figure out its coefficient of friction. It's no wonder so many Westgate students end up in engineering after Mr. Rumpel shows them how much fun it can be. And though he didn't quite convert me, <laughs> he did fuel a love of learning that brought me into environmental science with the willingness to push myself and the ability to have fun doing it. So thank you. So I've gotten to know Steph over the past semester as the instructor of our faculty's capstone critical thinking course. He was certainly up to this task and encouraged us all to think about everything that we learned critically, especially everything that we learned from him. <laughs> a lot of us had never had a class like his before, and some of us are still trying to reflect on what we learned. But that's the point. I've actually known Steph for over three years now, and throughout that time, he has always done his best to show me how to think, not what to think. In hindsight, this was obvious from our very first interaction, where he was willing to trust me, a first-year undergraduate student, with an independent research project. I have never learned as much as I did, as fast as I did, than in the four months that followed. Steph, your trust in students as their own independent thinkers has done so much to help shape how I think. And that's to say nothing of your willingness to step in and offer your support in the areas where I've needed it. Thank you for being a great educator and for giving me the ability to critically reflect on environmental issues, however they may develop in the years to come. Thank you. From the School of Dental Hygiene, we have student Nikita Aurora and teachers Mrs. Cindy Isaac Plowman and Mrs. Melanie Collins. Hello everyone, my name is Nikita and I'm a third year dental hygiene student. I would first like to thank the University of Manitoba and Center for Advancement of Teaching and Learning for the opportunity to participate in this reception, as well as Professor Mary Bertone and the School of Dental Hygiene for selecting me to be here today. Teachers have such an impactful role in our lives and when I was informed of the opportunity to recognize two teachers, it wasn't an easy task as so many educators have helped shape me into the person I am today. But the two teachers that have significantly contributed to my education, whom I'm lucky enough to honor today, are Mrs. Collins and Mrs. Isaac Plogman. When I think of my elementary, middle, and high school memories, the one teacher that comes to mind is my high school English and French teacher, Mrs. Collins. Mrs. Collins has a very humble nature and was the kind of teacher that all students wanted to be around. She is one of the most well-known teachers in Maples Collegiate, she always made learning English and French enjoyable. As a new immigrant in Canada, learning a new language was not something I was good at. However, French class became my favorite subject since the moment I stepped foot in her classroom. She made every student feel equal and worked really hard to make us all successful in her class. Looking back on it now, I realize how fortunate I was to have a teacher who put that much time and effort into her students. Her efforts prepared me to face the challenges I would come to face in life. When I think of the past two years in the dental hygiene program, the teacher I feel has made a significant impact on my education has been Mrs. Isaac Plogman, or as we like to call her, Mrs. IP. Mrs. IP has been an educator at the School of Dental Hygiene for over a decade. Throughout her career at the University of Manitoba, she has worn many hats, but is currently the Infection Prevention and Control Officer with the Dr. Gerald Nisnik College of Dentistry and Quality Assurance Officer with the Center for Community Oral Health. I met Mrs. Isaac Plogman in my microbiology course at the School of Dental Hygiene. 
She has positively impacted my opinion on education through the effort and time that she puts in behind the scenes to ensure we as students are set up for success. Coming back to school after already having been a working professional, I found it challenging to get back into the mindset of being a student again, but Mrs. IP's enthusiasm for teaching, her contagious laughter, and her positive attitude created a welcoming environment and made the daunting task of readjusting to life as a student effortless. Her dedication to creating a safe space for all students, instructors, and patients in clinic is nothing short of outstanding. Thank you both so much, Mrs. Collins and Mrs. IP. I'm grateful for our time together and definitely would not have been here today if it wasn't for your support and guidance in my journey as a student. I hope that all students get the opportunity to learn from such dedicated educators as yourselves. I admire and respect you both immensely. Thank you. From the, uh, Dr. Gerald Nisnik College of Dentistry, we have student Anson Chan and teachers Dr. Vanessa Hunzinger and Mr. Daryl Ferguson. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I would like to thank the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning for hosting this event to allow for the opportunity to celebrate and honor these two educators that have made a great impact on my life. Mr. Daryl Ferguson was my band and jazz band teacher at Acadia Junior High School, and he introduced me to his passion in the world of jazz. Although it has been a decade since I was in junior high, I still remember Mr. Ferguson as one of the humblest people I know. He was always engaging everyone's attention and aimed for excellence in the music. It was more than just trying to get us to play the right notes. Instead, he was striving to make all the notes on the paper come to life. He would spend the extra time outside of class to teach us in small groups, and his passion for jazz seemed endless. He would push the class to play repertoire beyond our level, and it allowed us to perform above our imagined capabilities. I want to thank him for inspiring not only me, but countless classmates in various fields of professions, which have taken his principle of striving for excellence and to do your best no matter the circumstances. Mr. Ferguson, Thank you for always respecting and listening to us, despite just being teenage kids at the time, and creating an environment for students to come and grow together to create meaningful and lasting memory for all of us who are in your class. Now, I would like to bring your attention to Dr. Vanessa Hunzinger, who is one of my dental school professors. Like all of us in the class, Dr. Hunzinger's journey at the university began when we uh, started our first year at the college. Despite this, Dr. Hunzinger was one of the most invested and passionate educators I've ever encountered and was able to bring her wealth of knowledge from clinical practice and teach us the core principles of dentistry. It only seemed like yesterday that I was in first year sitting through her pop quizzes and watching her show us how to perform fillings on a mannequin, but the principles that she has taught me still resonates with me. She passed down her aim for perfection in all that she does, from achieving the perfection in a tooth preparation or a filling down to the 0.1 of a millimeter. Although we probably look hideous as we struggled with the mannequins, she still believed in us even in times when we were doubting ourselves. She always wanted the students to be the best clinician they could be and offered invaluable advice from the preclinical labs to the clinic floor. Although she was pregnant with her second child partway through her education, her care for us did not end as she would send us emails to make sure everything was okay down to the last week before her delivery. She went beyond her call of duty and spent countless hours at lunch talking to students if there were issues or to help Mandy to improve. She shares her compassion towards patients to us and always reminded us to put the patient first. Her favorite saying of practice makes proficient reminds me to constantly challenge myself to provide the best work for my own patients. Many of you may not know this, but Dr. Hunzinger was actually here almost 10 years ago as a student presenting the award. So now it has come full circle and it is time for her to receive the recognition that she deserves. Dr. Hunzinger, you have made an enormous impact to our education through one of the most stressful programs and even through a pandemic. On behalf of the class, we are grateful that you're with, uh, were with us through our journey for the past four years, and I want to say thank you for being a role model to us all. From 
the Max Rady College of Medicine, student Philip Kaolek, and teachers Dr. Joseph Salvaggio, who is unable to be with us today, and Mr. Greg Shedden. Unfortunately, due to extenuating circumstances, Dr. Mr. Shedden also couldn't be here today. But I think both the teachers uh, deserve lots of thanks, so I'll go ahead. Um, so, hello everyone. My name is Philip Kowalik, and I'm extremely honored to be on this stage representing the Max Rady College of Medicine. I'd like to graciously thank Drs. Ripstein and Nickerson for the opportunity to, rec uh, to recognize two of my greatest teachers and mentors who helped me shape into the person that I am today. Mr. Greg Shedden always was and is an exceptional teacher. His charismatic personality, passion for education, and true interest in students' well-being are ever-present. I think almost every Sisler grad has a Shedden story. <laughs> well, perhaps one where he stood up on a chair, waving his arms up to emphasize an important learning point, or where he added a personal anecdote to bring a Canadian history class to life. However, what makes Mr. Shedden a truly remarkable teacher is his dedication to social issues and effort to involve students in making change. He encourages students not only to learn about current affairs, but to become a part of them. During my four years at Sisler High School, I planted trees to help support climate initiatives. I raised money to help sponsor a family, uh, a refugee family fleeing from the Syrian civil war and organized and hosted three youth issue debates that were attended by mayoral, provincial, and federal government uh, representatives, all with Mr. Shedden's support. Mr. Shedden taught me not only to ask why, but to ask why not, and for that I'm eternally thankful. Flash forward several years, and as a wide-eyed and inexperienced first-year medical student, I somehow stumbled into Dr. Joseph Silvaggio's neurosurgery clinic and gathered the courage to ask him if I could shadow him for the day. Over the next hours, I watched as Dr. Silvaggio greeted patients like an old friend, listened as he comforted patients who had just been delivered life-changing news, and reassured patients about upcoming surgeries that they were worried about. Little did I know that that day was to be the first day of my career in neurosurgery and that Dr. Silvaggio would become one of my greatest mentors in the field of medicine. I look up to Dr. Silvaggio not only due to his operative excellence, but his commitment that extends beyond the operating room, his diligence in taking care of patients on the ward, his attentive communication to patients and their families in their times of great stress, and his dedication to teaching residents and medical students, no matter how busy his always busy schedule is. Over the last four years, Dr. Silvaggio has shown me what it means to be a truly exceptional neurosurgeon. And as I start my neurosurgical residency on July 1st here at the University of Manitoba, I feel excited knowing that I will continue to learn from Dr. Silvaggio as I myself learn to become the best physician that I can be for my future patients. So I want to thank Dr. Silvaggio and Mr. Shedden for everything they've done for me. From the Col College of Nursing, we have student Winter Travers and teachers Ms. Pat Pruden and Mr. Dwayne Piper, who is unable to join us today. Hi everyone, my name is Winter Travers and I'll be a soon graduate of the Bachelor of Nursing here at the College of Nursing. And I'd like to express my gratitude for having this opportunity to speak here today. It truly is an honor to recognize those who have played a key role in where I am today. I've had many amazing teachers, but the two teachers that I'm excited to honor today are Dwayne Piper and Pat Pruden. I will begin by sharing my appreciation for the lessons I've learned from Dwayne Piper, who could unfortunately be here today. Dwayne Piper was my English and drama teacher when I attended school at Matthew Halton High School in Alberta. 
I remember Dwayne being an awesome, inclusive, and compassionate teacher. Dwayne's classroom was a safe place where you could express yourself without judgment. There was never a limit to how creative we could be when completing the projects that Dwayne assigned. This helped to foster my own creativity. We practiced mindfulness techniques in drama class to warm up that I still use to this day, including this day because it's pretty daunting speaking in a room full of people. But one aspect I appreciated about Dwayne's form of teaching was how invested he was in our education. He took the time to sit with us to go over our goals for his class individually. As a shy person, my goal in drama class was to get out of my comfort zone. And I can genuinely say that Dwayne helped me find my voice. I would now like to share the positive impact Pat Pruden has had on my nursing education. Pat was my first clinical education facilitator. She was also my instructor in skills lab and she continues to be my role model. Pat paved the way for my nursing practice by emphasizing the importance of safe, patient-centered care. I owe what I know to Pat because she truly is amazing. I try my best to remember the smallest details about my patients because Pat taught me that it is a great privilege to do so and shows that you care. And I have this card here that I received from Pat. It, uh, it's full of wonderful words, but part of it says, good, better, best, Never let it rest until your good is better and your better is best. Now these words of encouragement became my motto throughout nursing school, which we know during the pandemic, it was a little difficult. So, um, but I'm happy to be here today to honor you, Pat. Pat exudes compassion, wisdom, and integrity, which makes her not only an amazing nurse, but an amazing teacher as well. Now, thank you so much, Pat, and also Dwayne, who couldn't be here today, but you've had such an incredible impact on my educational journey, and I'm so grateful to have learned from the both of you. Thank you. From the College of Pharmacy, we have student Christine Vaccaro and teachers Ms. Heather McPhee and Mrs. Michelle Zacharuk. It's important. Beauty. This is a bigger room than I thought. That's exciting. Um, my name is Christine Vaccaro. I'm in my final year of pharmacy school, and it's such a privilege to be invited by the College of Pharmacy to come and chat about two really remarkable people that have contributed to where I am today, Heather McPhee and Mrs. Zacharach. And I'll start with Mrs. Zacharach. She was my English teacher for three years. We took English together, AP Lit, AP Psych, a lot of time in the classroom together. We're still standing next to each other and things are okay, so that's pretty good. Um, one thing that I have to say, when you first step into a classroom with Mrs. Zacharach, you notice right away the passion she has for the topic she's teaching. And a lot of us now are very far out of <laughs> our way from high school, but we still love these topics. We've taken extra classes, we are still engaged in those subjects. And when we get together, we we often end up talking about something we're reading or a current topic in psych we really love. But spending three years together in a classroom, you become a really good team, and it's because we had a really incredible coach. Mrs. Zacharach pushed us to do the best we could, gave us incredible feedback and mentorship. She was there to exchange stories about our babas, really be empathetic with whatever was happening on our plate at that time. And I'm so lucky, and I think my classmates would echo the same, to have had her for three years in high school. Thank you. Now Heather, Heather is a pharmacist. Uh, when she's not teaching us, she's worked in ICU and toxicology. She's soon graduating herself from a master's in education. And in our third year of pharmacy, she teaches us a skills lab course, which we'll call Apple III. Now bottom line up front, 
Apple three is the boot camp you didn't think you needed, but trust me, you really do. It retrains you to be the pharmacist that you should be. And now I've got this incredible hindsight bias of being at the end of my internship year. And I can confidently say that I wouldn't have been such a successful intern, same with my classmates, without the guidance and really empowerment to be the best pharmacist you can by Heather. Now we're almost kind of pharmacists, which is interesting, um, but we're really going to be the pharmacists we will because of the foundation Heather helped build. And I was going around because a couple of us got together um, on our last day of rotation. I was like, what are three words you'd use to describe about Heather? And quickly, um, a lot of people said um, she's very anti-silo. And I'll let you in on this joke um, or mantra that our class follows throughout our entire third year. Heather really instilled in us that pharmacists don't practice in silos and soon enough we'll be graduating 50 pharmacists that are really ready to meet patients and other providers halfway to make the best decisions we can and carry out I think a successful career in helping our patients in Manitoba. Now there was other words too obviously supportive dedicated, echo that, nothing to add. But the last thing is probably my favorite, and it's not a word, so I'm kind of cheating, um, but a classmate came up to me and they said, what's a word to describe someone that pushes you to be your best? And it's been a couple weeks, I still don't know, so maybe I'm not that great at English, <laughs> but I will take another knack, and I've got two English teachers here, um, to I'll add it to another, not great at English, not great at English, and end it with a cliche. The word for someone that pushes you to be your best is Heather. Thank you, guys. From the College of Rehabilitation Sciences, we have student Carly Proctor and teachers Dr. Moni Frick and Mr. Neil Wilcox. Hi everyone. Um, this year I'm graduating with a Master of Science in Rehabilitation Sciences, um, but I'm also an alumni of the 2006 Physiotherapy Program. Um, I want to thank the College of Rehabilitation Sciences for um, the honor of being able to recognize these two wonderful educators here today. Um, the first is Mr. Wilcox, who I met 35 years ago when I stepped into his grade one classroom at Sun Valley Elementary School. <laughs> Um, over the course of the year, Mr. Wilcox sparked in me a love for reading, writing, and learning that persists today. Since I was only six at the time, I don't remember any specific stories or words of wisdom he imparted in me. But what I do remember is the feeling I had in his classroom. It was exciting how the world felt bigger with every new thing that I learned. Um, my daughter Ryan is in grade one now, and I have yet again another perspective. Mr. Wilcox had the tall task of teaching the foundations of all the subjects that others would continue to build upon for the years that followed. Addition, subtraction, reading, writing, all the while helping me and the other 25, six and seven year olds navigate the social and emotional challenges that come with the grade one classroom. Now I can better appreciate how a good start can influence the trajectory of one's education. Without a strong foundation, school can be a challenging place and a child can easily lose their confidence. So I want to take this opportunity to say thank you, Mr. Wilcox, for your contagious enthusiasm, the solid academic foundation, and the sense of curiosity and self-assurance that you fostered in me all those years ago. They've served me well. And nearly 20 years later, I met Dr. Moni Frick, a professor in the entry-level physiotherapy program, and someone who has been a role model and informal mentor to me ever since. Um, Moni is a strong advocate for the physiotherapy profession, for interprofessional collaboration, and client-centered care. Um, when I graduated in 2006, the world was different. Um, for one thing, we took notes with pen and paper. But also, discussions about diversity, equity, and inclusion were not as prominent in mainstream culture as they are today. While my classmates and I were highly focused on memorizing every last detail of anatomy or physiology, or the latest assessment and treatment technique we were learning, Moni provided much needed perspective. Moni reminded us that we were not treating an elbow or a heart, but a person. A person with their own values and beliefs, their own strengths and challenges, and this perspective stuck with me and made me a better student, clinician, and a researcher. 
So thank you, Moni, for teaching me how to be a holistic healthcare provider, encouraging me to be curious, and for helping me to see the forest for the trees. From the Faculty of Kinesiology and Recreation Management, we have stu students Savannah Pohl and teachers Dr. Jonathan Singer and Mrs. Margot Arnold. Um, hello everyone, my name is Savannah Pohl and I am very honored to be chosen uh, for the Student Teacher recognition, re recognition Reception from the 2023 graduating class of the Faculty of Kinesiology and Recreation Management. Over the course of my education, I have been very, very fortunate to have had a number of different teachers who have made a big impact on me, including Margot Arnold and Dr. Jonathan Singer. Uh, the first teacher that I would like to honor is Margot Arnold. And Margot taught me in various different business education courses throughout my grades 10 to 12 years um, at the Weyburn Comprehensive School in Weyburn, Saskatchewan. And I just want to say that I'm so um, grateful that you could come out um, to be here today. And um, even though her expertise was much different than my chosen field of kinesiology, she taught me many different essential life skills that have helped to shape the person that I am today. She helped to instill a great work ethic in myself, and she always pushed me to be successful in my studies and classes. Throughout the courses that I took with Margot, she taught me different leadership skills that I have been able to apply throughout my degree and my life. And this stems from being a co-president of a junior achievement uh, business under her direction. Margot was a mentor to me when I was in high school, but she also acted as a friend and someone that I could go to if I had any problems or if I just wanted to have a chat. I'm very lucky to have gotten to know Margot and to have been a student of hers. And the professor that I have chosen to honor is Dr. Jonathan Singer. Uh, John was one of my very first professors that I had at the university, and he has continued to have an impact on me throughout the entire four years of my degree. Most recently, I've had the privilege of having John be my research advisor for the Undergraduate Research Award and a Senior Thesis Research Project in this past year. Throughout these experiences, he has acted as a mentor to me in more than just the research world, but also in my personal life. It's very evident that John cares deeply about all of his students, and he's always willing to help out in any way that he can, and he's very accommodating when any other challenges arise. John has also provided me with many different opportunities throughout my degree that I may not have otherwise had if it wouldn't have been for him, such as presenting uh, my research at an international biomechanics conference last summer. John has always been very supportive and he encourages me to pursue my passions. I feel very honored to have gotten to know John over the past few years and I hope that our professional relationship continues into the future. And once again, I would like to thank my teachers, Margot Arnold and Dr. Jonathan Singer, for everything that you have done for me and for the impact that you have had on my life. Thank you. From the Faculty of Law, we have student Lauren Gowler and teachers Professor David Ireland and Ms. Deborah Nicole. I am truly humbled to be here today. I'm proud to say that my education has been entirely Manitoban made by attending St. Mary's Academy and the University of Manitoba. I'm honored to speak about two outstanding instructors that have had a profound impact on my education. Mrs. Nickel from St. Mary's Academy and Professor Ireland from the Faculty of Law. When I often run into alumni from St. Mary's, often their first question to me is, did you have Mrs. Nichol as a teacher? And from there, we often start reminiscing about our favorite times with her. 
the open studio uh, projects that would allow us to take creative risks. Her dedication to the lunchtime art auctions that would raise money for the bursary fund. For her passion when she was talking about art history. More recently, however, she shared a story with me that truly captured who she was as a teacher. It was at the start of the school year and all the teachers were introducing themselves to the new staff. One teacher stood up and said, I teach grade 10 math. Another stood up and said, I teach grade 10 French. But when Mrs. Nickel, it was her turn, she stood up and said, I teach young women. Mrs. Nickel retired in 2017 after 34 remarkable years of teaching young women. Professor Ireland, or Davy as he prefers to be called, is also one of a kind. A colorful, swaggering, Scottish criminal lawyer turned tenure professor <laughs> with a heart of gold. He's found a way to make the even most daunting, complex class fun and engaging. Perfect for a scared first year student with an art history and English background. <laughs> Davy generously spiced our lectures with humor and stories from his practice finding a way to coax myself and my classmates out from behind our black Zoom boxes. But I think the best lesson I learned from Professor Davy Ireland is that as a lawyer, you need to be open-minded and kind-hearted. Sometimes in law school, it's easy to forget that the cases we're studying represent the lives and struggles of real people. But Professor Ireland, beyond any of the other professors I had, was able to communicate the importance of making human connections with the individuals that my classmates and myself will be expected to represent. Thank you, Mrs. Nickel, for teaching me the importance of sticking to my word, of giving back to the community and caring about the details. Thank you, Professor Ireland, for teaching me the importance of being there for other people, of spelling out hard truths, and that a kind heart can go a long way in making a difference. Thank you to both of you, and also thank you to all of the amazing teachers that I wasn't able to recognize today, but who really helped shape me into who I am. Thank you. From the Desotel Faculty of Music, we have student Evan Miles and teachers Mr. Will Bonas and Kevin Curtis. Hello, my name is Evan Miles and I'm graduating this year from the Desotel Faculty of Music with a degree in jazz piano performance. The teachers that have impacted me throughout my life may be different from other students because what I study and what I am passionate about, it was not taught in high school. The teacher that had the largest influence on me during my K-12 years was my private piano instructor, Kevin Curtis. I began taking lessons with Kevin in grade seven and continued to do so until grade 12. He helped me discover a passion for jazz and a desire to be creative. Every week he would push me to do something new and I always felt like I was growing. Lessons with him were amazing. I would learn so much every week, and his studio became a great place to hang out and discuss non-musical topics as well. Playing with him in lesson are some of the best musical memories I have, and the recordings he got me to check out in those years have become my all-time favorites. If it was not for him, I'm uncertain whether or not I would have continued pursuing music after grade six. He was a perfect teacher for me at that time, and I'm so grateful our paths crossed. Will Bonas was my jazz piano instructor for the last four years of my degree here at the University of Manitoba. I first met Will when I was still in high school at the U of M summer jazz camps. This made the U of M an obvious choice for me as I knew that I wanted to continue my studies with Will. Like Kevin, Will was the perfect teacher for me at that part of my life. Every week he would push me in new directions while still maintaining a connection to what we had done previously. He had an amazing sense for when to help me out or for when to let me figure out stuff on my own. He gave me lots of freedom as to how I could choose to work on material, which I appreciated. Will, like all other jazz professors at the U of M, really cared about the success of the students, and I was extremely 
grateful for his uh, invested support in making sure I was always learning. He is one of my favorite pianists and the best post-secondary instructor I could have asked for, and I'm extremely grateful I had the opportunity and the privilege of working with him. From the Faculty of Science, we have student Amy Fernando and teachers Dr. Gordon Goldsboro and Ms. Darcia Jones. Hello everyone, my name is Amy and I'm a student in the Faculty of Science majoring in biology. I want to give a big thank you to the faculty as well as the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning for giving me the opportunity to recognize two incredibly well-deserving educators. I'd like to start by introducing Ms. Darcia Jones. Uh, Ms. Jones was my high school English teacher during my last few years at Oak Park High School. Um, I hear that she now teaches public speaking, so there's some extra pressure on me today. <laughs> when I first met Ms. Jones, it became clear to me that her approach to education was different from anything I'd ever experienced before. She constantly pushed me not just to become a better writer and student, but to be a more resilient and thoughtful individual. She always encourages her students to think more deeply about the meaning of what we're studying. Her favorite thing to say in class is, so what, why does it matter? And that way of thinking, of really understanding, has helped define the course of my educational career from high school all the way through my undergraduate degree. I know that I'm speaking not just for myself, but for all of my peers and all of the students that have been lucky enough to have her as a teacher when I say thank you, Ms. Jones, for everything that you've done for us. The other educator that I'd like to highlight today is Dr. Gordon Goldsboro. I first met Dr. Goldsboro virtually over Zoom during a biology skills course, and I got to know him even better during a wetland field course that I took with him last summer. Every time that I'm taught by him, I'm struck by how approachable he is and how funny he is and how accessible he makes scientific research. I'm also humbled by the number of times he stayed with me after class to go over an assignment or to just generally give me career advice. He's really a natural educator and he brings that zeal into several aspects of his life from the many books that he's published. I hear he's got another one coming out soon. Um, and to the work that he does at the Manitoba Historical Society. It's difficult to define the tremendous impact that Dr. Goldsboro has had on the faculty but I know that he is so loved by his students. Thank you, Dr. Goldsboro, for all your support of us over the years. Thank you again to the Faculty of Science and the Center for this opportunity. I'm so grateful to have had the chance to highlight these two wonderful teachers. Thank you. Also from the Faculty of Science, we have student Holly Simpson, and teachers Dr. Brenda Hahn and Mr. Paul Anderson. Hello everyone, my name is Holly Simpson and I am graduating as a student from the Faculty of Science, majoring in Biological Sciences. I would first like to express my gratitude to the faculty for being selected to honor these two very incredible teachers that have had a very large impact on my education. Beginning with Mr. Anderson, who I just knew as Anderson at the time, <laughs> uh, who was my guidance counselor at River East Collegiate for the four years I attended. Mr. Anderson helped me through a rather confusing and very difficult time in my life, which many people experience as a confused teenager in high school. He helped me process some things that I was going through at the time, and in doing so, kept me on track so I could continue to excel in school. He taught me the lesson to, to lessen the pressure I put on myself and helped in realizing some of my dreams for my future when I went off to university. 
From day-to-day -day advice on little problems to scholarship applications and literally everything in between, he was always there for me when I needed him. He has helped countless students with a variety of difficulties. He always does so with patience, kindness, and compassion. Thank you so much, Mr. Anderson. You are truly a calming presence in a crazy time as a high school student. Next, I would like to recognize Dr. Brenda Hahn uh, from the Department of Biological Sciences here at the U of M. Dr. Hahn taught me introductory invertebrate biology, limnology, and advanced invertebrate biology throughout my years here at the U of M. And during these courses, Dr. Hahn taught with such a passion about her subject matter, she was always incredibly enthusiastic when teaching her students. She always made sure to make note of the super cool critters, as she sometimes terms them, or invertebrates, as we usually call them, um, <laughs> that we discussed in class, which gave me an understanding of a whole new world of biology that I've grown to love. She ultimately helped me discover my love for aquatic biology, which led me to working both at the Department of Fisheries and Oceans Canada, as well as the Experimental Lakes area over the last few years. Thus, it is thanks to her that I will soon have my first co-author paper published at DFO, so thank you very much for that. Um, Dr. Han has also supported me as a reference for job applications, as well as on scholarships, and in my search, a continuing search for a master's program. <laughs> She is ultimately the reason that I have chosen the field that I work in now and hold so dearly to my heart, and I could not be more grateful for her. You have truly inspired me so much. Thank you so much for your time. Congratulations to both of these amazing educators, and thank you both for everything you have done for me. I'm very grateful. From the Faculty of Social Work, we have student Olaumi Adelakun and teachers Dr. Hai Luo and Dr. Hakim Oladumeji Bakari, and Dr. Bakari was unable to join us today. Hello everyone, my name is Olaumi Adelakun, and I'm a graduate student from the Faculty of Social Work. I'm honored to be here today to be among the outstanding students, being able to honor their outstanding teachers, in my academic journey, I have come across various exceptional teachers who have contributed to my journey today. But these two teachers stood out to me the most because they have that outstanding impact in my life and academic pursuit. Um, the first one is Dr. Bakari, and I'm honored to be calling him a doctor today because it was Mr. Bakari when he taught me. <laughs> he, is my, he was my geography teacher, and he saw that potential in me because I was that student who was comfortable being an average student. I was okay with passing as long as I passed, that's good with me. But he said, no, you have more than that in you. And he told me it's easier for you to come down the ladder than climbing up the ladder. And that was stood out for me and it has stuck with me since then. And since then I've been putting my best in anything I lay my hands on and I'm grateful for that today, and that's what contributed to my achievement to be selected by the Faculty of Social Work today. In addition, I would like to thank um, Dr. Hailu. The first time I met her was on the black box, which we all call laptop, during the pandemic. And I was inspired by her method of teaching, making it so interesting, giving us classwork, so that we had those interactions among us, and not just hiding behind the cameras. And when I was choosing my field focus course and I saw Dr. Hailu, I was like, yes, I don't care what time this is. If I have to pay for parking, if I have to wake up early, I'm going to a class. It was an 8.30 a.m. class, but I, yes, I chose it. I had to make up those missed hours at my placement. I don't care. And I never regretted doing that because I didn't know which area of social work I wanted to study or focus on and pursue after graduation, but taking a health and aging class made me realize I have passion for the aging population. And I am glad, and I thank you so much for making me see where my career is going in my master's and probably my PhD to be called Dr. Laumia de la Cue in the future, hopefully. <laughs> so I would like to say thank you so much to these exceptional teachers for shaping me and for their guidance and taking their growth and learning of the students at heart. 
Thank you so much and thank you everyone for being here today. So obviously, I, I'm very full. Uh, I feel very uh, encouraged to hear all the great things that people have shared uh, throughout their uh, educational life journeys here. It's very heartwarming to hear. And um, if I wasn't shedding tears outside, I was shedding tears inside, as I call it. But uh, this brings us to a, uh, the end of our time together. And I would like to take the time to thank all of you for attending. And as well, special uh, thanks to the uh, operations team at the Center for the Advancement of Teaching and Learning, as well as AV Services, uh, for their support in making this event a success. Please join us for a reception in Marshall McLuhan Hall. It's through those two doors. Uh, in the middle section here on the other side, and it'll give you an opportunity to congratulate uh, the honored guests and awardees, and as well, uh, just to be able to hear people's stories again. So thank you again for sharing in this special uh, time together, and have an enjoyable rest of your afternoon. <laughs>